We've all been there before. You follow an ancient treasure map obtained from a sunken shipwreck, hoping to find some rewards from a pirate long gone. You discover a chest, long forgotten, unopened since it was buried in the sands of time. As you carefully pry it open, mystery and intrigue swirling around in your mind, you gaze inside to find a few handfuls of wheat and a coal. Obviously, that chest is at the extreme end of being unlucky, but it's a song and dance that's all too familiar to longtime players of Minecraft. You spend hours exploring, searching for some kind of abandoned remnant of a lost civilization, hoping for riches, but instead, all you find are materials you could have easily gathered yourself in a fraction of the time. That's not to say that all of the loot in Minecraft is bad. In fact, some of it purely embodies the game's survival nature in such a rewarding way that I don't think it needs to be changed at all. But we're here today to talk about why the majority of generated loot in Minecraft is seemingly so pointless. Now, it should be noted that I intend to shed some light on exactly why dungeon raiding and treasure hunting in Minecraft loses its charm so quickly. But this doesn't mean I dislike the other aspects of the game, or even Minecraft as a whole. I quite enjoyed this sandbox survival game and have been doing so for the past 10 years. But even after all that time, you can't ignore certain seemingly blatant design issues with a game that is as popular as it is. So let's start by actually defining what the problem with the loot in Minecraft is. When we talk about loot in Minecraft, note that we are specifically talking about generated chests found within predefined structures or areas of the game. Things like desert pyramids, mine shafts, and buried treasure. Normally, when exploring these areas in the game, the player can hope for finding unique items that they can take back to their base. Things like a saddle, enchanted golden apples, or even a mending enchantment book. But this isn't always the case. If you're unlucky enough, and trust me, this happens more often than not, most of the chests included within these structures instead have things like rotten flesh, pumpkin seeds, and string. That would be okay if the general loot balanced out the junk that is bound to be in an old decaying temple, but when some of the better loot in the game is a saddle and a name tag, you know there's something wrong. The issue here isn't really the lack of loot as you can pretty reliably find a few chests within a mineshaft, four within a pyramid, and even more within a nether fortress, but instead a lack of varied, meaningful loot. Let's break this idea down by item, so we can see exactly what we're talking about. You can surprisingly get a large majority of items in Minecraft from the varied loot tables in the world, from things like tripwire hooks all the way to lodestones. Let's for now look at the items a player can get within the Desert Pyramid, an early to mid-game dungeon with a trap that can insta-kill the player. But let's face it, no one has fallen for that pressure plate trick in years. Looking at the official chest loot table for the Desert Pyramid on the wiki, the most common items include rotten flesh and bones, which will spawn an average of 5 per chest. String, gunpowder, and sand shortly follow this with spawning an average of 3 per chest. Next, we have gold, which spawns about one per chest, and iron, which spawns about one per every two chests. So far, all of these materials are very basic, and only gunpowder and iron have a long-term use for the game. Next, emeralds, golden apples, saddles, and enchanted books all spawn about one every three chests. I would argue that this is the actual good loot tier because there are four chests in a pyramid, you are statistically likely to get at least one of each of these items. Towards the end of the list, we have gold and iron horse armor, which surprisingly spawn about one every five or six chests. And finally, topping off the rarest loot in the pyramid, we have one diamond every nine chests, one diamond horse armor every 20 chests, and one enchanted golden apple every 50 chests. So, great. What does all this mean? Well, like I said, the problem isn't the amount of loot, because on average there will be at least 9 items in each of these chests, but the actual loot itself is rather lackluster. The good tier that I mentioned before contains things that are usually pretty difficult to get or will help the player in all stages of the game, like emeralds or enchanted books, but the rare tier? The items that the player gets surprised by because they only appear every so often for experienced treasure hunters, 
It's not looking too worth it right now. Sure, diamonds are always good, a staple of Minecraft, and will always bring excitement to any season of player. But you only get a very small handful of them in these chests. Diamond horse armor is incredibly underwhelming as well. The first time you get it, it's nice to put on your horse, but you will very likely never need a second set. And finally, the most statistically unique item here is an enchanted golden apple. This is definitely a useful item, especially for hardcore players, but it is a one-time consumable that lasts for only a few minutes. So the main takeaway is looting a dungeon like this is a good way to get materials, and rarely an item to use once or twice. All in all, that's not terrible for an early to mid-game dungeon that's pretty common to find. So then, were we wrong? Maybe the loot just isn't that bad? I mean, for the average Minecraft player, finding a chest with these items in the beginning of the game can be really useful and rewarding. No, it instead comes back to the unique and varied loot that I mentioned earlier. The problem here is that while some of these items are nice to get, they can be obtained from other sources as well. That's why, after your third jungle temple, you never feel the desire to explore one ever again. You know that there's a small chance for something useful, but there's very rarely anything unique to the dungeon that you couldn't just obtain somewhere else. The player expects something new or exciting every time they want to explore somewhere like this. Let's look at another survival game, like Terraria, for a minute. Now I know, I know, comparing apples to oranges, but they're both block-based survival games, so just hear me out for a minute. A game that has over 5,000 items and blocks in it, it dwarfs Minecraft by a huge amount. When it comes to chest loot in this game, no matter how many chests you get, it always feels fresh. Why is that? The chests contain the same, if not less, items than Minecraft, and many also contain materials and basic items like ingots, ores, and potions. Well, a huge draw for Terraria chests is the guarantee of a quote-unquote rare item. Generally, this is a weapon, but it can also be a new way to decorate, a rare equipable, and even things like mounts and fun vanity items. Obviously, Terraria has more tiered progression style of gameplay, and a lot more player mechanics than Minecraft, so there's bound to be different and alluring loot types, but that doesn't mean the same principles can't be applied to the game. Instead of putting a saddle in 10 different chest loot tables, make it unique to village chests and a pair of boots to the desert pyramid that make it quicker to run over sand. Make fishing location-specific to encourage exploration and rare fish or even specific treasure to different biomes. And I'm not the first person to suggest this either. Nearly every adventure-based mod for Minecraft seeks to update the loot tables and add interesting items to chests. The Quark mod, for example, follows a similar route to Terraria and adds a cosmetic reward of being able to change the color of your enchantment glint. The Artifacts mod, one of my personal favorites, works with the Curios API to add rare equipables that increase base vanilla stats, like jump height, mining speed, and adds items granting the ability to glide and even see in the dark. So, is that the solution then? The Minecraft community coming together to demand and create better loot for the sandbox game that is Minecraft? Well, no, not exactly. What if I told you? The problem with loot in Minecraft isn't that the items are bad or too commonplace, but instead are a perfect fit for a very different playstyle. This is the true problem with loot in Minecraft. We as players are expecting it to be similar to loot in other games. Items that reward and encourage exploration, delving, and fighting. But Minecraft isn't made for that, mostly. Minecraft is a game primarily about building and surviving, depending on what style you like to play. So here's the truth. The loot in Minecraft currently rewards players with a nomadic playstyle, rather than a static playstyle. Here's an example. A lot of chests contain items like weak food, seeds, and string. For the average player that is bringing treasure back to their home, they're gonna leave these items behind. But if you play Minecraft by constantly being on the move, these items can be invaluable. A small boost of food from a mineshaft on the way to your next ocean monument can be a huge help. Need to make a makeshift base somewhere while you collect a lot of spruce wood for a new build? Plant those seeds for renewable food and craft that string into wool for a bed so you can skip through the night. Multiple sets of horse armor and saddles mean you can take more risks with your horse, and you can always tame a new one if you need to. Materials like coal, sticks, and iron suddenly become vital for your trek through the caverns that you don't intend to return through. So, in essence, 
It's not that the loot in Minecraft is bad, but the intended use for loot has been misinterpreted. The common dungeons weren't made for players, like myself, who expect new, meaningful loot every time you raid them. They were made for people who never stop exploring and need more materials on the way to their next destination. So, there you have it. The true problem with loot in Minecraft. Or... is it? While this method of design makes sense for a part of Minecraft's intended audience, it is completely ignoring a core facet of Minecraft itself. Building! Besides surviving, speedrunning, and building with redstone, a huge portion of Minecraft's intended gameplay is to build. We've seen some incredible builds from the community over the years, and whether it's a scale replica of the Death Star, or a tiny dirt hut built in survival, building is one of the main draws of playing Minecraft, the freedom to express that sandbox desire, and the ability to build whatever you want out of cubic blocks. So then, surely, the reason for adventuring at all, and consequently the loot, would reflect that, right? You may think so, but this sadly isn't the case. There are no items in dungeons that increase your block placement reach or your placement speed. There are no potions that grant temporary flight to build high up. And worst of all, there are little to no unique blocks found within these chests that would be great to seek out and build with. Now, yes, you could argue that building a beacon can help facilitate building, but you can do that with absolutely zero loot gathered from chests. So, while yes, I think we've been looking at loot in Minecraft the wrong way, as it isn't really intended for a stationary RPG experience, it should be intended for people who want to unleash their creativity on the world. So my proposed solution would be to add more building rewards for exploring dungeons. Give players the equivalent of an angel block deep within end cities, to place down in mid-air so they don't have to build a huge tower. Make the common dungeon give you a way to pick up, or at least reconstruct the mob spawner closer to your base. Make igloos contain an icy block that can only be found within their loot chests. Luckily, it looks like Mojang has already been doing this over the last few updates, making Prismarine such a cool block, and the main way to get it is to visit and clear an ocean monument. And to the inclusion of Bastions, a new way to salvage cool blocks from the nether, and new banner patterns as well. The beauty of Minecraft is that there are so many different playstyles that everyone, myself included, can find a way to enjoy the game for hours on end. Hopefully, if we change our expectation on the loot in the game, and with a few more building incentives from Mojang, we can better appreciate the game for what it is. A sandbox game where the community is amazing and the possibilities are endless. So that's it. If you think there are points I missed about loot in the video, make sure you comment them down below, and remember to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos with this kind of content. I know this was kind of out there for the usual stuff we did, but it was something that was bothering me in Minecraft for quite a while, and wanted to do some research and learn more about why the design decisions were made about loot in the game. So, I've been Mudkip Ninja, and until next time, see ya!